Good morning, everybody, and welcome to day 18 of the Extreme Budget Challenge. This morning, I am making some uh, biscuits and sausage gravy for the next couple of days of brunch. And today, I'm going to show you how to use the self-rising flour, because really, you only need three ingredients now. I have one cup of the self-rising flour. I grated in one quarter cup of my margarine. I prefer to grate it in versus cutting it in because I like the fluffy um, shreds that it gives. I think it just adds a little bit more um, butteriness and fluffiness to your biscuits. And then I'm just going to mix in my milk until it is... Now I have a half a cup here. I may not need it all. I'm going to get close, but I'm not going to put it all in there. And I'm just going to start bringing these together. Once it's mostly combined, I turn it out put it on a floured surface and make sure it's incorporated pat them out and cut them so it's really quick biscuits don't take much time all right so these are starting to come together see I did not need all that milk I usually don't If I squish them, yes, so they come together. I need just a touch, just, a, and I'm talking just a touch here, okay. I can always add a little flour once I turn them out if I need to. Okay, I'm, I'm the kind who has to work with my hands because you get a feel for it. You know if it's too dry or not, whether you can bring this together or not. All right, so I'm going to... Grab some of my flour, put some out on my washed counter here, and turn out my biscuit dough. I'm telling you, these are quick. No reason not to make biscuits. And besides, I think they taste so much better than those cans that you pop open. And they always give have like a funky little leftover taste, I think. Alright, so literally this is it. I'm just going to pat it out to however thickness you like. I use a um, canning ring because I don't have a biscuit cutter. Just push straight down, try not to turn. That seals the edges and you don't want those edges sealed. And I'm going to pop them on. I have a tray over here, like so. Pop them on my tray. I like to put, especially when using margarine, I like to put them in my freezer for Oh, five to ten minutes to let that margarine kind of uh, firm up again. It makes your biscuits more fluffy. And in the meantime, I can start making my, you know, my biscuit gravy or whatever I want to do. So these are going to be thicker than my last ones, so I'm probably not going to get as much. But because they come together so quickly, if I need to, I can make another batch tomorrow for breakfast or we we do brunch we don't do breakfast so last one it's going to be a little guy and you don't want to overwork your dough that's the worst thing you can do with biscuits that little guy is going to go there so now I'm going to pop these into the refrigerator or the freezer for like I said five to ten minutes before I bake them off right I've had my biscuits in the refrigerator and my toaster oven warming to 425 degrees these are going to take about 8 to 10 minutes. It's going to depend on how thick you cut them and how big of a, a cutter that you use. So once you hit that 8 minutes, keep an eye on them. Right, I've been browning up that small tube of the um, sausage that I bought at the Dollar Tree in this pan here. I'm going to try to get it, you know, fairly brown. And this is another one that's really pretty basic, three ingredients. You can use as little as, like I'm going to do today, some the sausage, flour, and milk. Probably add a little bit of pepper. All right, so I have my biscuits, I mean my sausage there. I'm going to use whatever's left over in my biscuit flour, and I'm going to sprinkle on just enough to cover everything. And I could add more if I need to, and I'm just going to stir this together. Basically, I'm turning the 
grease from the um, bis. I don't keep calling it biscuits. I'm turning the grease from the sausage into a roux. There you go. Good enough. I have a little bit of leftover milk from my biscuits. I'm going to add just enough to cover the bottom to start with because I can always add more. And in this case, I want to add some fresh cracked black pepper. I'm going to stir it until it thickens. If it's too thick, I add more milk. If it's too thin, I just stir it longer. Alright, so that's the basis of your sausage gravy. Alright, this is about the consistency we like ours. You can see it's a little bit thicker. Um, I, it sticks to the biscuits better in my opinion. Alright, so here's my brunch. I have my biscuits and gravy. If you have any questions on these recipes, let me know in the comments below. Alright, it is time to get ready for dinner. Tonight I'm going to make a kind of a chicken parm. Okay, first thing I did was I took my thighs, I flattened them out, I just took a heavy cast iron and kind of smashed them down a little bit. And I took that little kind of weird muffin or biscuit that I made and I toasted it lightly. I'm trying to get kind of a panko type thing going on here. To my breadcrumbs real quick, this has got plastic wrap on it, I'm going to add, I want to flavor it up a bit. I want to add some garlic powder. I could also put this on top of the chicken, but might as well put it in my... And then I'm going to add a little bit of Italian seasoning. If you don't have that in your cabinet, use whatever you have or leave it out. They're fairly inexpensive at Walmart. I think they're like a dollar for a container, which really is a nice deal. Now I know I don't have enough to do the entire chicken, so my main focus is to get this nice crunchy topping on top of the chicken. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel apart my plastic wrap here. If I can figure out where it is. All right. Get rid of that. And then I'm going to salt and pepper my chicken. If it opens, maybe. Fairly generous, because that's where some of your flavor comes from. Salt. Do some cracked pepper. And then I want to do the other side. I don't want to get my hands dirty quite yet. Now, if you have chicken breasts, this works just as well. It's just that the thighs, I couldn't believe I went to Walmart. I had to stop in and get some food for the dogs and uh, wow price of boneless skinless chicken breasts used to be $1.99 they were $3.99 today for that inexpensive family pack that Walmart sells so the chicken thighs are uh, the if you can find the boneless skinless chicken thighs are a better deal all right so I got salt and pepper on those the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of flour in my, um, this is what I use to sift. Oh, that got a little much on there. And I want to just, I want a light coating. That one's going to be a lot more than light, but that's okay. We'll make it work. And which hand do I want dirty? I'll use this hand. See if I can get some of that off. I don't need quite that much on there. It won't hurt to have a little more anyway. And I'm going to put a little bit more. I want to cover these in flour pretty decent. Wow, this thing is really coming through big today. Shake off my excess. Probably use that here like that. I want to cover both sides. Okay. I'm just trying to layer on some kind of flavor. I want these a little bit um, kind of like I fried them, you know, but I'm not going to fry them. I'm going to bake them. Let's see, that one needs a little bit more on the one side. Okay. 
All right, so I have those ready to go. In the bowl back here, I have one beaten egg white with a little bit of water, and I'm simply going to if I can get my fork to go into it. Ooh, this chicken is tough. There you go. I want to dip my chicken in the egg white. I want to add some flour onto my surface of the plastic wrap because remember I said I won't be able to get it on both sides. And then when I get them all done, I will take my breadcrumbs, make sure you can see that well enough, and sprinkle those on top. If you have Parmesan cheese, uh, they do sell that at the dollar store. They actually sell a pretty decent Parmesan cheese. You could add that to your breadcrumbs, and then I take my dirty hand, and I'm going to pat them on like that. Okay, I'm just kind of adding some texture to it. And then I'm going to finish the other two, and I'll be right back. Now that my chicken's been breaded, I'm going to place it in this pan here. It's a little bit small for what I want to do, but the next one is way too big, so... I'm just going to kind of fit them in, even if they overlap a little bit, it'll be okay. I did put a little bit of um, my pasta sauce in the bottom here to coat the bottom of the pan, so hopefully they don't stick. And if this is a small meal for you, you could serve it on um, a roll or on some good crusty bread and make a, sand a chicken parmesan sandwich out of it. But I'm going to put it over noodles, so that should be okay. All right, so I'm going to um, get my mozzarella cheese. I'm going to shred that up, and then I'm going to sprinkle that on top. All right, I want to wait. Make sure I wash my hands really good before I grate it up the cheese. So I have about two ounces of cheese here. Um, actually, I would use it all if I wasn't on a budget like this. But I'm just going to put... You know, cover it up a little bit. Now, I know a lot of people put sauce on the top before they put it in the oven. I let my underneath because I'm like, I did all that work to get a nice crunchy top. Why would I want to put sauce on it and have it get soggy? So now I'm just going to cover it. It's I like to bake it a little bit lower. I bake at 325 degrees in my toaster oven. And I just wait until I make sure that the chicken is completely done it could be 15 minutes, it could be 20 minutes, it depends on how thick you get that chicken. So I'm going to get this started and at the same time I'm going to start some boiling water in order to make some noodles to go with this. For the rest of this chicken meal, I instead of noodles, I'm using some of that top ramen. Now we do not have the inexpensive pasta in my area like Moderna or anything like that. So these, this is a total of 50 cents for two packages, which will easily feed the three of us. I always save the packets because you can use it in place of bullion for something else. And I put about half of what was left in my sauce pan, my pasta sauce, in the pan to warm up. So once I get it all warmed up and the noodles are cooked, it's just a matter of throwing the noodles in the pasta sauce and plating up our dinner. My next step, I'm just going to use my spider and scoop my ramen noodles in here. And you can see I don't worry about getting all the water off because if you need to thin down your sauce a little bit, you can use your pasta water, or in this case, ramen water. If I had some, I would put some Parmesan cheese in there. I think that would be good. But let me see if I need to add any water to it. I don't think I should have to because I had quite a bit of sauce. Just depends on how saucy you like it, I guess. All right, now I'm just going to get ready to serve it up. Right, here we go. We have our dinner tonight, and it didn't take very long. It did take about a half hour to cook the chicken because I cooked it on low. But anyway, um, a faux chicken parmesan. If you have any questions or comments, I'd appreciate them. Please leave them below and have a wonderful night.